So I found with near-infrared spectroscopy when you're taking reflectance measurements, uh, using the actual spectrometer and the reflectance probe themselves and collecting the measurements isn't the most difficult part. It's finding a way to have your samples so that when you take your measurements, everything is consistent and you're having reliable measurements. Through my experience with this type of equipment is that when you take your reference measurements on your white reference tiles, with your probe in the probe holder, place the probe holder on the reference tile and get your reference measurements. But when you're taking your actual sample measurements, you want to make sure that that distance that that probe was to the reference tile stays the same between measurements. So you have your standard set up here and that distance needs to stay the same. So the way to do this with this particular type of setup is you need a flat, surface to place the probe holder over. So some of the samples that I've worked with is soil samples. So what I've done is they've been sieved through a two millimeter sieve and then I place them into a petri dish. I found that this way you can have be able to fill the petri dish up and have a nice flat surface with the same distance as the probe was to the reference tile to the sample. So all you do is place the probe holder with the probe over the sample and that distance should stay relatively the same um, as much as you can possibly get it. So I wouldn't want to have a petri dish filled um, like halfway so that changes the distance that the probe is to the sample as it was to the tile. So you want to keep everything consistent. So I wouldn't want to have it set up like this. I'd want it pretty full. So when you're filling it up, it's kind of like when you're baking a cake and you've got flour in the measuring cup and you scrape the top off. It's kind of like that. So you want to have it just at the top and not overflowing. So that will give you a nice flat surface to work with. Same thing goes for tissue samples. So I've ground up leads using a coffee grinder and that works pretty well for me. Um, and I just did the same thing with the soils and filled up a P2 dish. So all you do, probe holder over the sample and you can start taking your measurements and they should stay consistent. So you have that nice flat surface that's the same distance. Um, if you're using whole leaf samples, a lot of people will take fresh measurements so you want to get those as soon as possible. But also, since moisture does influence uh, the near-infrared reflectance readings, you some people, they'll dry their samples. So you want to be careful that when you dry them, you tr keep them with maybe something weighted on them so that when they dry, they'll dry flat because leaves will tend to curl when they're drying. So that is not a reliable surface to collect measurements on. So you want to have nice flat leaf and then you can take your measurements. And finally I've also worked with xylem increments that I've collected using an increment board. Um, I didn't want to grind them up so I needed to find a way to have this cylindrical surface flat that I could place the probe over. So what I found was I got this molding from Home Depot or stores like that and I ground one of the grooves down a little bit so that when I place my increment in that slot with the radial surface up, so when you're looking at the tangential surface, the fibers are horizontal. It's just the way the wood dries, it dries a little bit flatter in that direction so that the t very top of the increment is level with the tops of the grooves. So that way I place it over it like it's a table and I can position it and get my measurements that way. I hope this helped in any of your future projects.